So this is one of your fields here. So this is yeah, this is this is the biggest field here, um, and it kind of stretches right over and down into the valley. Um, and we will be sowing all over the top of this hill, this side, and then you can see all the way around, just as far, like right all the way around. These are all fields that we will sow, and we'll get about 600 tonnes of barley okay. out of these fields. And this will do us roughly for about a year's production. So we'll get a So you only use uh, barley that you it's grown here. like that. Uh, yeah. Yep. Within, I think, a mile and a half of the farm is the farthest end of the fields mm. away. Um, so yeah, no, this is it's all it's as local as we can get it. It's just yeah, it's it, it, yep. And we which barley are you growing? We use here? laureate. Um, laureate. Just now, yep. Okay. So we just use that. It's a modern variety, um, and this is normally sown in March. Um, we've got covered crops in just now. Hmm. So this time of year we plant mustard seed and oh. beetroot. Beetroot? Yeah, no, and it's what the job of that is, the beetroot goes down into the soil, promotes worm growth and fluffs up the soil. And it's not for colouring the whisky. No, <laughs> no, no, no colouring at Lochley at all. So, um, no, but the covered crops are hmm. basically it, it aerates the soil, so it keeps it nice and fluffy when in a Scottish winter there's going to be a lot of rain. Yeah. So. And this, you can see the colour of the soil. There's a bit of clay in the soil too, so it kind of it, the moisture sits on the top. It doesn't drain away so mm. easily as it maybe would in the, maybe the west coast or something like that, where you get the peat bogs or yeah. in the sandy shores. So it does hold a bit of moisture. So the fact the cover crop really helps the moisture yeah. dissipate as well. Do you know how how much longer the season here is uh, than, for example, on on Isla? Does it make a difference that you're a little bit more south? Uh, probably. It's, 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 the, the weather here can be quite variable. It's, we're in a valley mm. here as well, basically from the top of Glasgow down to um, probably just where about Cumnock. And there's a valley that, that we're in here and it has its own microclimate as well. So. Um, It's one of the things we're trying to understand. What difference does it make growing barley in Ayrshire? Because we are the only distillery in mm. Ayrshire that will grow all their own barley. Um, we have done some experiments this year and we might find that out in a few years' time um, because we did some floor malting, believe it or not, at the distillery in May this year. So Ready. yeah, you know, I, I've I've got these skills to be able to do the the floor malting. So it was very different, though. So we were using trailers for steeps. Mm -hmm. We were using uh, the new warehouse that we built for the germination, and then we used a barley dryer uh, to dry the, the grain down, uh, the kilning bit almost. So. A lot of shooting in the dark and a lot of guessing, but we managed to get there and we actually produced a decent yielding barley. But the, the main thing is the flavour profile and it was different. So that's good mm. to try and understand that. And um, it would be nice to see how this develops through the years and then we'll try and understand just what the air shed. Was it a one-time experiment or trying to do it uh, again? Probably like it's a natural time of year. April, May is a natural time of year mm. for things to start growing. It's, it's just when the barley should start growing, everything. So that was the reason we chose that time. Plus the ambient air temperature is a little cooler as well. So the breeze will help cool the grain down so that there's uh, I guess less manual labour to turn the <laughs> barley over. Um, so yeah, we, we'd, we were doing that as well and I got my sons to come down and help me turn the floors and it um, cost me a few pounds but that's okay, it was good. It was a good exercise and we got there to say and this, this, the spirit qualities is the most important thing and it was nice, it was different so um, through the same process that we would normally use to distill. So 
we'll maybe be able to compare that in two or three years time and just just to see how it keeps developing it would be really, will be the interesting thing yeah certainly yeah. So as we're looking at the farm building right now? Yeah, this is the farm, yeah, we're coming back to the farm. When, when was it built originally, yeah. do you know? That's a really good question. I think in the early 1700s. Oh. So, and basically the farm, one of the, one of the most famous tenants of the farm is Robert Burns. So he stayed and worked on this farm for his father. Uh, 245 years ago and he used to walk down this valley here so from the farm probably down this track all the way down and down at the bottom of the valley there is a place called Turbo uh -huh. and that's where he made the bachelor's club really yes so that's kind of one of the things yeah. so it's something like sacred ground isn't it y yes <laughs> if you like if you're into your Scottish heritage, yes, yes. Uh, this was uh, Robert Burns is a, a huge figure in Scottish history and Scottish culture. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's a it's a nice it's a nice anecdote for us to be able to say that. Uh, and he liked a drama too as well. Yes, yes. I, I would Although he was kind of poacher, kind of gamekeeper. I guess you never knew what side of the fence he was on. So you could probably make a Robert Burns whiskey here. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's quite a few people made yes. Robert Burns whiskeys already. Um, but um, and I think I think Aaron owns that really. Yeah. Um, because they are they, well, they, Aaron's just basically over the hills yeah. there as well. So um, no, I, I, it's it's something we're proud of at Loch Lee that. We do have that to say, but we really want to, like, the whiskey, we need to do the talking. Yeah. Yep, and that's just a nice story that goes along <laughs> with Lockley. So, um, and we're, we're working on that all the time as well, so. So this is the crop, this is this year's harvest um, that we have here at Loch Lee. Wow. And the wee guest. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is the, the tons that we've got um, from the harvest this year. And it'll, we'll store it in here. We don't malt on the site as yet either. So what we then do, we'll send um, probably six lorry loads at mm -hmm. a time over to Baird's um, just south of Edinburgh and they'll malt the barley for us and then send it back to the right. distillery. So this, we'll do this process probably four times a year. Right. Yeah. So, and this is your harvest from 22? Yes, like this is this year's harvest. Right. Yep. yep. And you said it's laureate. It's laureate barley. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's... Um, yeah, it's a smaller, smaller grains this year than last year. I'm not sure why. The summer maybe just wasn't as warm. It was nice and warm at the end. Um, but it, so it's just smaller corns. Um, but these are that's just, this is what we've harvested from the fields around us. Uh -huh. Yep. So on. Um, we've yet to do the tests to see how, what the yield is, what the, kind of the dynamics are. We will start to do that shortly. So um, smaller grain means uh, less yield this year or? And no, it just depends. Mm. Like, cause you'll get, it's, it all goes per ton. So okay. everything's by the ton. So if you've got smaller grains, you get more, higher, uh, thousand corn, mm. uh, lower thousand corn weight, but so you get more as well. These tanks here, roughly about a ton at a time. 
and then below is the mill where we'll grind it up and then it goes round in a circle and then into this bin here this right. is the grist bin and this will hold about two tonne of grist so the ground the grind that we're looking for as well is about 30 percent husk 60 percent grits and 10 percent flour so we keep a chunkier mash um, just because we're looking to get um, a nice clear wort coming through in the mashing process. So which kind of mill is it? It's a, that's a very good question. It's a CTS mill. Okay. Um, so they just, they are used kind of generally with smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. So, and as you can see, it's quite a small mill, but it's a four row mill, same as um, like a Portis mill would be. Yeah. Um, and it, we get a really nice consistent grind coming from that as well. Yeah, so from the grist bins we go up upstairs and then into the mash. So you can see the conveyors bring it up and then into the mashing machine at the top. Right. And then the wort comes in at the bottom and they'll mix and then into the the mash tun here. So we've just mashed in and it's now sitting, letting the the so sugars fuse. How old is this? What's in here? Uh, this is the two ton of the grist, mm. and the mash tun itself is um, 2018, so four, just over four years old. Okay. Yep, and we, we will do just one mash a day of just over two ton of malt. And so, yeah, very different <laughs> and rate of production as well than when what I would be used to. 7, right? Yes, going from 24 7 to 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. five days a week. So, mm. yeah, so, but we've got the capacity here to grow. Um, and over time, we will grow. Um, we'll, we'll grow the production, but it's all 100% for single malt uh, and Lochley single malt whiskey that we will be uh, producing one type of spirit right um, and we'll mix uh, things up slightly so it'll be a clear wort we'll get from the the mash tun and that'll go into the, the fermentation traditional mashing process uh, first water then the fusion and then we basically put in the hot water and flush out the kind of longer chain sugars. So, um, working well, uh, the, the equipment's working well, we're getting good extract, we're getting every ounce out the malt that we can as well, um, both from a flavour point of view and uh, an efficiency point of view. Mm. It'll then start to go along and then to one of these fermenters. This is Douglas Fir. There's the wood. And that's this is the one we just started filling. So um, number two wash back today. Um, but number so num there's usually only three full at the same time. So this yeah. is um, one we will have filled on today is Wednesday. This is Mondays. So it's nice to get a yeah. smell of that. There's nice fruit flavours coming through, um, which is really what we're looking for. That's been 48 hours fermenting now. Um, so yeah, just I always like to smell to get make sure the fruit is coming through because it's one of the key flavours of Loch Lee is the fruit flavours, and we'll try and maximize that as much as possible. Um, so the fermentation times will be about 10,000 litres mm. in the, the, the wash pack. The short fermentations are 66 hours and the longs will be about 116, 120 hours. Okay. So because we only work five days a week, there'll be three that will be long over the weekend. Because so you're doing a short and a long? 
right. yes yes it's just saturday sunday because we're not working oh, right. the fermenting instead of um, that that gives us slightly different uh, flavor profiles the 66 will be more kind of fruity whereas the 100 and well, 114 will be more kind of cereally grassy mm. coming through so we we marry them together And then we get these combination of flavors. And we'll put them into the, the wash still at the end here. What George is watching here. So um, this is the wash distillation, 10,000 liters. Um, just one charge, one wash back into the, the wash still and we will uh, we'll charge this, we'll preheat it and then we'll run it and it will take probably about seven and a half hours uh, running including the, the, the coming in bringing it in it's, it's running now and then kind of we'll just we'll try and really nurture it at the beginning of the run so that we maximize these fruit flavors coming mm. through and um, we spent a lot of time in that recently just to try and really capture all the fruit flavors at the beginning so we're doing We'll do that and then we'll just start to increase the speed slightly um, and get a wee bit more uh, efficiency kind of further on. But like trying to harness all these really sweet flavours at the beginning is something we've concentrated on. And then this is second distillation, so we'll get the low wines from the first distillation. Um, we'll have the heads and tails, sort of the four shot and faints from the previous distillation mixed with low wines in here. You can see the shape as well, it's got a bubble boil in it as well, just to, again, more copper contact. That'll lead mm. to sulphites, which will give us fruit flavours, like tropical fruit flavours when Lockley is 20 or 25 year old whiskies have been released. So um, we'll start to see that probably in about another eight to 10 years time, these flavours coming through from the, the copper contact. Again, run really, really slowly. Um, just trying to really kind of harness the flavours. We'll go on spit it, roughly about 75% alcohol, and we'll come off at 67. So, smaller cut, almost, you could say, like you know how McAllen does kind of high cuts, quick cuts, okay. it's similar to that. Uh, but how would you describe the new make? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really soft, I would say. So the average strength will be 71% alcohol. Mm -hmm. It's really soft, um, it's, it's really fruity. It's, it, you should get the cereal notes coming through, maybe some malty, biscuity notes as well. And then we're looking to get some kind of light floral notes coming through at the, at the back end as well. So we've spent a lot of time building the depth of the, the spirit and just trying to get more and more and more into mm -hmm. the new spirit. Um, so, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do the high cut and then we'll recycle everything through as well. The cuts that we take will get transferred all through next door, it's, it's got to be a, a zoned area. Um, but yeah, wash still is just, mm. you see it's, it's, it's running slightly fast, we just like it like that. Just touching the other side of the bowl and no more, so that's in a nice flow there. And the spirit still. Just almost the other, it should be on the other side of the bowl as well. So it's running, it's on spirit right now. Mm. Um, so that'll be Lochley in so many years' time. Yeah. <laughs> This is where the magic gets into the cast. Yes, so this is the low wine and faint receiver in this mm -hmm. end, and then there's a small section in this end for the spirit runs. Then they're pumped into this, which is the SRWV. And here we can add water, reduce it down. It all then comes through, and then this is our filling hose. Mm -hmm. So it's all 
everything at Lochley is agricultural, I guess. It's not very high tech, it's not very, um, I guess, um, how things might be in a, in a big corporation. You have to stop it yourself, it doesn't stop from its uh, no, no, it's all it's all up to humans at Lochley. So and then we've got a good selection of casks in here, so the majority of what we'll fill will be first fill bourbons. Um they they come over from the US, um through uh, Jim Beam and they'll right. normally be makers mark casks that we get. Um, the other casks you see here, these are Sherry Hoggies, um these are all Arosso Sherry Hoggies. And these will come from uh, Miguel Martin, um, and we like we have a long relationship with him, mm -hmm. um, and most people do use him. The quality of the casks, it's very, very good. Um, we've actually got port hoggies here. These are seasoned uh, port hogs heads, um, and these these will probably start to get used in the the summer recipe, as I said, uh, the harvest recipe. Um, the Sherry Hoggies will go into the cast strength, which right. will be it'll be a cast strength version of Lochley coming next year. So I'm looking forward to that because at cast strength, Lochley spirit is very, very good. It's very, very good. So, um, and then we've got uh, all of those Sherry butts we've got here. So we use them a lot as well. We use them in our barley, um, mm -hmm. which is is the main. Uh, ca the main recipe we've released this year. Um, it'll also be used in the eight-year-old and the 25-year-old. We use sherry butts as well, so they'll be refilled for the 25-year-old, but everything else is first fills. Who repairs and, and prepares your casks? Uh, we will do repairs, so okay. we're, we're just, we've got one to repair today as well. We've got a hoop burst. Uh, so we will fix that later. I guess it's just one of those sounds as well, like even whether at Lockley or Lefroig, you just had to repair your own casks. Mm. Um, so we had, you just learn these skills over the years. Um, so yeah, we, we will fix it. We've got a rivet that's gone in one of our hoops, so we'll fix that and then we'll get another uh, Sherry Hoggy done later on for filling, so yeah. No, all good, and the cast quality is good, um, so that really, really helps as well. Like we are not scrimping and scraping in casks. So, so everything here is very hands-on, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. There's even like there's no automatic valves in the process. James and George will be through, and they'll be everything's done by hand. Whether it's this like the steam is normal, done by hand. But the, all the valves are all manual. There is not one automatic valve at Lochley. So it is very hands on all the way through. And then from here, we'll go across and it'll go into one of three warehouses we have on the site. Perfect. In January this year, 2022, we started releasing uh, some whiskies. So we've released four whiskies so far this year. We did the inaugural, we did sewing edition, we then released the, the main one of the year, which is our barley, which will be the, the most common uh, mm -hmm. release, the core release. And then we will, we have released harvest in September, which so we will have seasons, and the seasons are based on the farm. So sowing is spring, harvest is summer, fallow, which will be coming soon as well, is autumn, and then ploughing is done in the winter. So okay. th these seasons uh, are the farm. We call each one a crop too, as well, just rather than a batch, mm -hmm. just linking back to the farm. And so there'll be five crops of each of the seasons, and then we'll get an age statement release right. in 2027. So four, four more years to wait. Five more For years. For season, yeah. The yeah. seasons will evolve as well. Each, okay. each crop will be different. It'll be a different age, it'll be a different kind of cask. 
profile as well so that um, if somebody likes say summer mm -hmm. um, they can get the, the five releases and they'll all be different it won't be the same every year and the the, the releases generally will be um, first fill bourbon for sowing mm -hmm. pork casks for harvest uh, sherry casks for fallow and um, an ex peated cask um, is going to be the ploughing one yep yeah. so I'm not sure I'm allowed to say where we got the peated casks mm -hmm. from but yeah there's, there's quite a few one. there's quite a few of them floating about hey, yeah and yep. one could imagine yes naming it yes yes yep I might have worked there. <laughs> <laughs>
planning for this. It might not end up that way. It depends how the liquid evolves. This is the bit we don't know. Mm. And so this is why it can change because um, we're thinking an eight-year-old might be good. Mm -hmm. Might have to wait till 10. And then, so if it's the 10, well, you might just do a, like a 15 year old, but like an eight and a 12 might be great. Mm -hmm. So we will see, um, it depends. It's just about the liquid and what's right. And you really have to understand like the, the DNA of Loch Lee and what it should feel like and what a Loch Lee whiskey is. Mm -hmm. So if it matches all of these, uh, if it ticks all these boxes, I guess, then it will be released as an eight-year-old. If not, we'll just wait. <laughs> we will wait. Um, so, yeah. But you're so far, you're very happy with the young ones, aren't you? Yeah. No, it's, it's, we've done well, I think. Um, everyone knows, say, if it's August 2018, that we were distilling and we've released in June this year. Um, it's obvious what the age of this liquid is, I think. I think we're off to a really, really strong start with the liquid. Um, we, we spent a lot of time making sure it was the best mm. that we could do um, and the recipe was correct. And we involved the whole team in that as well, which was, that was nice that everyone gets to be part of this. Um, and so, yeah, well, no, we're off to a strong start. We're, we won't take anything for granted, but we are after, off to a strong start. We need to improve. It's just the way we just need to improve. Um, and we will get better and better. It's, it's, that's, that's how I see it happening. Um, and um, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's the bit where you just have to wait. We don't know yet, but we, we will wait and we will see and we will all be able to tell if it's, if it's better or not, I guess. So that's the non-public tasting room in here, right? Yes. Yep. This is where all the experiments happen. So um, we'll just review a new spirit. This is us reviewing the new spirit mm -hmm. um, throughout the year. And then this is the this is the floor malted new spirit. Oh, so yeah, I yeah, can give you a smell of that. There's just a, like a, there's a creaminess to the new spirit. It's slightly different. I'll show you versus mm -hmm. um, this one. So this was three weeks ago. So that's not flow mortis, right? Nope, that's normal. So more of the kind of apple cereally flavours coming through yeah. in that one, whereas with the four malted one, it's, it's just... As you said, it's really creamy. It's really, it feels thicker, it feels just, I don't know, it's hard to explain, it's... it's I would say this one is, uh, the non floor malted is clear and this is a little bit cloudy. In the yeah, no, I know what you mean, yep, I know what you mean. But it's going to probably take a bit more time to develop as well. But there's more of a, there's a kind of, there's a kind of vegetal mm. nose to this as well, I guess that's the best way to say it. You get the sweet and then you get the cereal and then it goes vegetal and in the middle it's really creamy. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops over the years. So that was, yeah, May, uh, actually beginning of June this was mm. uh, casked. So we will look at that and, and see how many casks did you fill with that? Do just you know? uh, about 32. Okay. So just a week's production. And um, we did. So yeah, looking forward to see the results. And then just yeah, just different things, different casks. Casks and here. Yep. 